Um, I am really pleased to welcome you to this kickoff conversation and I'm joined today by Lisa Donaldson, who's a learning technologist at Dublin City University and part of the ePortfolio Ireland community. Um, and she works within the teaching enhancement unit there. So I know you have lots to share with us about the work that you're doing, um, as, as we were saying, on the front lines of higher education these days. And um, also, you know, just the work that you've been doing with portfolio, getting things mm -hmm. rolling um, forward in, in Ireland. And so we're really pleased to have you here today. Welcome. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here. Um, so uh, yes, you're right. I'm here as both the representative of Dublin City University and for ePortfolio Ireland, which is our community of practice. Um, and I suppose I, I come with a little bit of trepidation to this today, to, you know, when we're speaking about doing the right thing with ePortfolio, because in general in Ireland, ePortfolio is in its infancy still. So what I thought I'd do is just share a little bit of background about some recent research that ePortfolio Ireland has done um, around ePortfolio practices across the island and then maybe have a, a, a chat through around what some of our own faculty have done in Dublin City University. So without further ado, if you're all right, I will share my screen. And I will go right to where I need to go, which is here. And hopefully we can all see everything there. That's great. Thank you. Um, yeah, so really what I wanted to talk a little bit about was the research initially. Um, we surveyed 22 institutions across, um, across the island of Ireland. And as you can see, based on this scale here, just over 50% of institutions in Ireland really consider themselves at a very early stage of ePortfolio, where it's less of a programmatic or institutional approach, but more on a module by module basis. Um, and what we found was that, and, and I'm sure it's true here, that there's, there's probably a lot of people that have come to or listening to this session today that are probably new to it um, and new to ePortfolio practice as a result of COVID. Because all of a sudden, a lot of us have been looking for alternative assessment practices to replace exams that weren't able to, to happen face to face. So there's probably um, quite a few of us now in, a, in this very same position. So what I did want to share, though, was a little bit about, um, if we're talking about ePortfolio doing, got, uh, being done well, is have a look at impact. And we did try to measure this in those institutions that are using ePortfolio. And you can see that there is early evidence of things like enhanced reflection and uh, improvements in employability and, and tracking work placement skills. Um, but really what we're finding is that there's low impact currently. Um, but a lot of that really is because very little evaluation has been done and there's very little literature out there. And I know that's been called out globally that there's, there's little empirical evidence out there as, as to the efficacy of ePortfolio. So what we actually did with ePortfolio Ireland is that we put out a call through uh, our tell journal of the Irish Learning Technology Association. So it'll be a special issue around ePortfolio and that we're hoping then that a lot of the people that contributed to the survey will actually sit down, reflect on what they have done with regards to adopting ePortfolio and we can add to the evidence base from there. Um, so I wanted to move on a little bit. That's the, the bigger picture, if you like, of the, in the context of ePortfolio in Ireland. And just bringing it back down to a, a, a local perspective again, I wanted to chat a little bit about um, what impact ePortfolio has had on our lecturers, on our faculty in DCU, with regards to the current pivot to online. So what we found in speaking to the lecturers is that there's been a number of themes. So I'm certainly an ePortfolio champion and believer and can speak to all of the benefits that ePortfolio can bring, but I thought I would literally take the words out of the lecturer's mouths and just share them with you a little bit. Um, so a number of key themes emerged and firstly was that ability for ePortfolio to maintain the connection with the student now that we're all of a sudden in this remote uh, environment. 
And that's a pretty unique challenge because students are now moving more and more to learning independently. A lot of activities were asynchronous and it's difficult to maintain that connection and community with the student. Um, so I, just thought I will leave these on screen so um, everyone can have a little look and a little read through these just as I, I talk through a second. But it's interesting that um, what our faculty are saying is that ePortfolio activities seem to provide a window to the students' unique experience as they're living it in, a, in the COVID world. And while they are remote, and they're doing this independent learning, it ePortfolio provides a mechanism, a window, a showcase for them to, to, to see their and demonstrate their own growth over this period. So moving swiftly on, uh, the second theme that emerged from speaking with our, our lecturers in DCU is that learning for all is, is critical and enhancing accessibility is critical, especially now in this remote teaching world and ensuring that all students can embrace learning outside the classroom is key. Now, th this is where ePortfolio has some real strengths because ePortfolio can support multiple means of expression, multiple means engagement and that variety and that choice can be built into um, assessment activities and teaching and learning activities. So that might be around a choice of topic, a choice of medium and ePortfolio as a tool is powerful enough to support that kind of flexibility and creativity. So as you can see here, a number of our lecturers in, in, in different faculties, I tried to take a, a, a smattering from different faculties. And um, what they have found is that the, the students have embraced the ability to use different mediums of expression and um, this has resulted in the students being more deeply engaged in what they're doing, which is really important. Um, a scaffold and a safety net. I like this about ePortfolio. Um, so what I really wanted to talk about here was the ability the importance in um, remote teaching to set student expectations, particularly when the students are remote and they're lacking perhaps the typical face-to-face -face guidance and instruction as to what they may, um, may be required to do within uh, any portfolio-based activity. Um, so ePortfolio is really strong in, in, in supporting that kind of longitudinal approach to learning and reflecting on that learning can be really beneficial. So some of the scaffolds and safety nets that you can provide for students can include rubrics um, as a guide for assessment. And uh, what I'm going to share during the week is um, a collaboratively developed rubric, uh, which we cheekily call the Holy Grail of rubrics, developed by members of the community of practice here in Ireland. Um, so just with regards to what our, our faculty are saying, and certainly within one particular program in law and government, they, they leaned on the rubric heavily. And the lecture there was very insistent that the rubric was actually critical to the success of the ePortfolio activity because the students had a roadmap that they were able to follow. And when they're at a distance, that's really, really important. So when you are designing for remote delivery, I think it's very important to provide very clear and a kind of an unambiguous structure for the, for that, the students' learning journey. Um, ePortfolio allows you to create maybe low stakes type um, assessments at the outset. And you can make explicit those instructions um, through prompts, through timelines. And really what it can do is become a very supportive tool in that particular sense. Now, this I say a little bit tongue in cheek. Um, this is a hard time for everybody, particularly those of us that are, as you, you said, in, in, on the front line of education when it comes to support of the pivot to online due to the, the COVID pandemic. Um, this is not necessarily a valid pedagogical reason for adopting ePortfolio, 
But I have to be honest in that some of our lecturers have actually embraced the use of ePortfolio um, for almost selfish reasons, because what they wanted to do was to actually improve that traditionally tough task of doing corrections. So in a time of challenge, when we're all trying to respond to changing circumstances and pedagogies and technologies, I'm suggesting that you might just be kind to yourself. Um, because what we're finding is that a correcting ePortfolio based assessment can be a lot more pleasurable than other mediums. So with those few points, I just wanted to say thank you, Tracy, for having me here today, just to give you a few indicators, I suppose, of how our faculty in DCU have embraced ePortfolio and, and some of the key themes that have emerged from our conversations with them and of a number of resources that I will be sharing out um, during the week with you and with the, the rest of the attendees at the conference. Well, thank you so much, Lisa. I mean, honestly, it's so nice to, to hear about the work that's happening in different contexts and, and all of the parallels, I think, that, that exist among all of our communities, you know, those of us who are doing this work. Um, what stood out for me were themes around authenticity and enabling the students to um, really connect to who they are as learners and the unique individuals. And um, the, the part I also loved was the, the joyful piece, because I actually think that is a, an important pedagogical practice. Um, I, I you know, certainly noticed that myself in my own ePortfolio work that, you know, the, the presentation of the student as a whole person in relation to the context of my course was just so much more enriching than reading a student paper um, and, and definitely made it easier to, to and more enjoyable to, to grade those assignments. So I, I definitely hear you there. Absolutely. I think this particular lecturer was actually saying that he wanted to laugh when he was doing his corrections, as opposed to correcting essay after essay. And what he found was that students rose to the task. And because the tool, the platform is so, or the approach really is so flexible, that he was getting memes and personalized graphics and various things that made the whole process so much more pleasurable. Yeah. I mean, I think it's it's all about empowering the learners to really be successful um, in the context of who they are and what they're learning. So, um, you know, obviously we're we're converted. Um, we are we're definitely keen on on portfolios. I think the other thing is that you know wherever people are starting from, and I think you're quite right that we may have some some folks joining us over the month that are new to portfolio practices and pedagogies. That you know it's okay, you don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, how am I gonna do this? There is a broad community of folks who are doing this work at a variety of different stages and we're all here to help and to share. So there's no need to reinvent the wheel, but really just to, to leverage all of the good things that have happened and figure out what, what would work best in, in our own context. Absolutely, and that was the whole idea behind our community of practice because we're better together and the sharing of resources has made us all better at ePortfolio, particularly, uh, as I said, Ireland is fairly new to embracing the whole concept of ePortfolio. And what we found is that the community has become really strong, really strong. And there's a lot of events, activities and collaborative documents and resources that have been developed as a result of that coming together. Well, we are so excited to have you with us um, at ABLE. And um, just a quick note that Lisa has recently joined the ABLE Board of Directors. So we're thrilled to, to be connected with you. And um, we're really looking forward to, to the week and to the whole conference. So thank you so much for, for being willing to join us. Likewise. Thanks so much, Tracy. Bye for now.